Part 1. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Good morning, Taz Car Insurance. How can I help you? Hello. I was wondering if you could give me a quote for my car, please. I'd like to insure it for a period of 12 months. Certainly. I need to take down a few details first of all. Can I have your name, please? Certainly. It's James Bartolo. Sorry. Can you say that again, please? Sure. James Bartolo. That's B-A-R-T-O-L-O. OK, thanks. And your date of birth? It's the 1st of the 8th, 1973. Great. And can you give me your address, please? Sure. It's 146 Eastern Road, Chester. Fabulous. Now, is the insurance for just yourself? No. Actually, my wife drives the car, too. Her name is Alice Jackson, and her date of birth is the 23rd of the 4th, 1968. That's OK. I just need to write yes or no, and the make and model of the car you wish to insure. It's a 1998 Ford Laser. OK. And do you have any idea of the value of the car? Yes, it's around £4,000. I only bought it about a week ago. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. OK. And do either you or your wife have any previous convictions or disqualifications? I'm sorry we have to ask this question, but of course it affects the price of the insurance cover. Not a problem. No, actually we both have clean driving licences. Nothing so far, touch wood. Good. So I can write none for that question. Now, who were you previously insured with? Uh, with Aitken Insurance. I'm sorry, could you spell that? Yes, it's A-I-T-K-E-N. I actually have a three years no claims bonus too. Great. That will bring the price down a little for you too. OK, if you just give me a few minutes, I'll work out a price for you now. That looks like it will be £275 per year. That sounds good to me. Can I pay for that now over the telephone? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear two students talking about university clubs and societies. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Hello. Are you the person to ask about joining a club? Yes, I am. What would you like to know? Well, I'm interested in several things, but I'd like to know more about the different clubs and how much they cost. I'm looking for a small club that's not too expensive. OK. 
have a look at this table. You can see the names of the clubs, the fees, and the number of members. I'm afraid they aren't in any order. If you look at the top of the list, the first club is table tennis. That's one of our new clubs. Oh, right. So the table tennis club costs £20. That's quite expensive. Yes, it is a bit expensive. The cross country cycling club is cheaper, though. Membership fees are only £15, but on the other hand, it's got 100 members. The film and drama club costs a lot, doesn't it? Yes, £50 is a lot, and that's probably why it only has 12 members. Ah,、uh, is there any other club you think looks interesting? Look at the next one street dance. Have you ever done any street dance? No, I haven't really. It's the cheapest. It only costs five pounds.、Mm. Okay. Shall we start with your interests? What do you like doing best? Um, well, I like photography. I've got a professional camera, so I take it quite seriously. But I can't really imagine belonging to a club to take photographs. I usually go on long walks on my own and take photos. So I like photography, but I wouldn't want to join a club to do it. Okay. So, what else do you like doing? Running? Oh, no, not running. I like walking, but I hate running. I'm afraid the running club isn't for me, or the cycling club. And film and drama? Ah,、uh, no, it's far too expensive. But I do like yoga. I've practiced yoga on and off for years. How many members does the yoga club have? It's always a small group. A lot of people sign up at the beginning of term. But they stop going after a few weeks, so they're left with a few regular members every year. That sounds good. I think I'd like to join the yoga club. And what about the contemporary dance club? Is it expensive? Contemporary dance? No. It's not expensive. Ten pounds for the term. Do you like dance? Well, I've never tried contemporary dance, but I do like jazz and tap dance. How often does the group meet? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. So, Can I have your full name, please? Victoria Mandeville. M A N D A V I L? No, no. M A N D E V I L L E. Double L E. Thank you. And how old are you? 19. And your address? 57, Berry Gardens, Atherton Park, Manchester, M46. How do you spell berry? B E R R Y? No, it's B U R Y. Right. B U R Y. And do you have a contact number? Yes. My mobile is 07942 573279. Yes, that's right. Is that all?、Uh, one more thing. Do you have an email address? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two students. One of them is explaining to the other how to use the university library. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Excuse me, Lily. Could you help me? You know, we've got an essay to write about eating customs across the world. Yeah, we have to borrow some books, don't we? Yes, but I missed the library training. Do you think you could show me how to find the books and how to take them out? Sure, no problem. Shall I tell you about the different parts of the library first? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. OK, then. Let's look at the plan of the library. Here, you can see the main door on the north side that leads into the lobby. In the middle of the building, there's a big open PC zone. The lift and stairs are on the left as you go in, and on the other side of the building, there's the library cafe. That part of the library is pretty sociable. It's a good place to study with friends. I really prefer to study alone. Is there anywhere in the library I can go? Oh, if you like studying in a quiet place, it's better to go upstairs to the silent zone. As you come out of the lift or up the stairs, you'll see a section on your right facing north which is closed off. That's the silent zone. On the other side, facing south, are the bookshelves with all the cookbooks and... All Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Now, can you show me how to find a book? Well, the library is very big and the books on food could be under cookery or they could be in history or even entertainment. So the first thing to do is to look it up in the online catalogue. Where do I do that? It's easy. There are lots of computers in the library for that. OK, I see. Right, you look up the title first. When you found the book, you'll see it has a class mark next to it. The class mark is one or two letters and a number. Make a note of the class mark. Then look it up on the plan of the library. The plan shows you exactly what section of the library the books are actually kept in. Thank you very much, Lily. So how do I borrow a book? That's simple too. When you go to the library, you'll have to take your student ID card. When you want to borrow a book, you take it downstairs to the scanner. Then, scan your ID card first. Next, open the book and slide it under the scanner until it makes a sound, a short beep. And that's all you have to do. Oh, sorry, I forgot. At the end, the system prints out a ticket. It's a good idea to keep it for a while just in case you have a problem with your loan. Thanks again, Lily. You've been really kind. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecture on William Kidd. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. A Pirate Story, William Kidd William Kidd 
who was better known by the name Captain Kidd, was a 17th century British privateer and semi legendary pirate who became celebrated in English literature as one of the most colourful outlaws of all time. Fortune seekers have hunted his buried treasure in vain through succeeding centuries. Kidd's early career is obscure. It is believed he went to sea as a youth. After 1689, he was sailing as a legitimate privateer for Great Britain against the French in the West Indies and off the coast of North America. In 1690, he was an established sea captain and shipowner in New York City, where he owned property. At various times, he was dispatched by both New York and Massachusetts to rid the coast of enemy privateers. In London in 1695, he received a royal commission to apprehend pirates who molested the ships of the East India Company in the Red Sea and in the Indian Ocean. Kidd sailed from Deptford on his ship, the Adventure Galley, on February 27, 1696, called at Plymouth, and arrived at New York City on July 4 to take on more men. Avoiding the normal pirate haunts, he arrived by February 1697 at the Comoro Islands off East Africa. It was apparently some time after his arrival there that Kidd, still without having taken a prize ship, decided to turn to piracy. In August 1697, he made an unsuccessful attack on ships sailing with mocha coffee from Yemen, but later took several small ships. His refusal two months later to attack a Dutch ship nearly brought his crew to mutiny, and in an angry exchange, Kidd mortally wounded his gunner, William Moore. Kidd took his most valuable prize, the Armenian ship Quedah Merchant, in January 1698 and scuttled his own unseaworthy adventure galley. When he reached Anguilla in the West Indies, April 1699, he learnt that he had been denounced as a pirate. He left the Queda merchant at the island of Hispaniola, where the ship was possibly scuttled. In any case, it disappeared with its questionable booty, and sailed in a newly purchased ship, the Antonio, to New York City, where he tried to persuade the Earl of Bellamont then colonial governor of New York, of his innocence. Bellamont, however, sent him to England for trial, and he was found guilty, May 8th and 9th, 1701, of the murder of Moore and on five indictments of piracy. Important evidence concerning two of the piracy cases was suppressed at the trial, and some observers later questioned whether the evidence was sufficient for a guilty verdict. Kidd was hanged, and some of his treasure was recovered from Gardiner's Island off Long Island. Proceeds from his effects and goods taken from the Antonio were donated to charity. In years that followed, the name of Captain Kidd has become inseparable from the romanticised concept of the swashbuckling pirate of Western fiction. Among other stories concerning caches of treasure he supposedly buried is Edgar Allan Poe's The Gold Bug. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.